Dean quickly picked up from where Adarsh left off. Plans and personnel may have changed, but the team took things in its stride. Each member unwavering in his goal to ride the South Pole Traverse all the way to 90 South. As the day of departure for Antarctica inched closer, Santosh and Dean realized that being mentally prepared was just as critical to success as being physically ready for what lay ahead. When they finally landed, disembarked from the aircraft and set foot on the ice for the first time, they were greeted by a vast white expanse extending to infinity. The start line was getting to Cape Town. Uh, we went to test in Iceland twice. I mean, we just had to figure out so many things. I think uh, it's been a really, really uh, tough journey so far. Getting to Cape Town was, uh, was a miracle. This point of me sitting here in Cape Town and being able to talk about it, uh, we, we've had to spend two, literally two years on this. Uh, right from the first time the idea came up to uh, actually being here, it's taken us two whole years and uh, a lot of uh, obstacles in the way and we've gone back to the drawing board multiple times uh, to figure out uh, how best can we get to the start line. Uh, this expedition, um, I mean trying to get the motorcycle to the South Pole has just taken over my life completely. I mean there is, there is nothing outside of it for me. What the hell am I doing here? That's a bloody good question. <laughs> Feel safe in this man's hands? This man's hands? <laughs> <laughs> Finally! We have a flight out tomorrow and uh, <laughs> it's by chance that we don't have to fly on a transport plane. We have a Bombardier personal jet. I think that will be the last bit of luxury that we'll see for the next 40 days. We got the boarding passes, that's the plane. We're ready, let's do it. Let's get on there, get it done. Okay, so we've been taking over this for eight days now. And finally, uh, today we are going to leave the known world behind and then we are going to go on to the continent. Airplane mode on, no network, nothing for the next 40 days. After two years, finally we are on the continent and looks like good weather today. Beautiful man, it's like beyond belief and look at that ice. We could just be chipping that and be putting it in our lemon iced teas. This is something else. If the conditions are like this, it should be favourable. If it's like that, we're going to have hard work. impressions are it's, it's completely stunning it's absolutely mind-blowing and it's crazy to think we're gonna be here for five weeks here we go this place is called the oasis this is one of the driest places without ice and snow and that's why they have some cottages around so that people can rest for four or five days acclimatize and then carry on the weather has been brilliant today uh, it's it's minus two right now and I can't feel it because of the sun the sun is uh, the sun is really, really strong. Uh, we still have to go and unpack the bikes. Let's just get there, get the bikes prepped, get the thing started, and I have no questions at all. Get the top off, physically unload, and we'll take the one end off. Yeah. We'll have to wheel the bike yeah. out.
Ooh, hoo, hoo. They are all in one piece as, as of now. Happy? Very, very happy. It looks really tricked out, doesn't it? It looks so cool. Very relieved. I'll be more relieved when it's um, up and running. Yeah. Dean's got a very good knowledge of, of the mechanical uh, side of the motorcycle. MG stands for Mickey Griffiths, the guy who prepped the bike back at the UK TC. I can put the tank back on. I can't put the seats on until we've got the battery. So I'll get the tank on. We'll get it up on that stand. We'll get the wheels swapped over. And then this one's about ready to run. Put some fuel in it. Get access to the battery tray so we can hopefully get the new batteries in position. Then we'll attach the extra wiring for the heated clothing. Just currently fitting the USB chargers so the GoPros can be powered up. You got the bike sorted out. We got the bikes primed. We changed the tires. Changing a tire, especially a studded one in these kind of conditions, is not easy. Dean managed to do it uh, really fast. But we have several wheel and tire combinations for the first part of the journey. And as of now, I'm going to fit the tires with the longer studs because here and the Ross Ice shelf is predominantly ice. So we could do with the long studs to dig in and give us traction. It's a good, reliable, solid, simple motorbike. It's a job, there's no way out of it, we're in it, let's do it. We'll put fuel in it now to fill the tank up so it's one tick off the box, jobs to do. That just leaves tomorrow then to put the battery on, set the correct tyre pressures, fire it up and away we go. That is the first Royal Enfield to ride at Antarctica. The next episode sees the riders firing up the motorcycles and starting their journey from Camp Novo. They're about to find out if their preparations for the challenges ahead were sufficient or not.